Unlocking the Wordplay, Homophones and Homonyms in Literature and Poetry. Hello and welcome, fellow wordsmiths. Today, we're going to delve into the world of English language in a fun and fascinating way. We're focusing on advanced homophones and homonyms, but not just any homophones and homonyms. We're looking at how they're used in literature and poetry. Let's unlock the beauty of wordplay and see how writers and poets use these linguistic tools to add layers of meaning to their works. Before we start dissecting examples from literature and poetry, let's refresh our understanding of what homophones and homonyms are. Homophones are words that sound alike but have different meanings, and often different spellings, like right and right. Homonyms, on the other hand, are words that sound alike and are spelled alike, but have different meanings, such as bat, the flying mammal, and bat, the sports equipment. So why do authors use homophones and homonyms? In literature, these can be used to create puns, to suggest multiple meanings, or to inject humor. They can also serve to make the reader think more deeply about the text. Shakespeare, a master of language, often used homophonic and homonymic puns to add wit and depth to his plays. Here are a few examples of how these literary devices are used. 1. In Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare uses the homonym, die, to convey both the literal death and the metaphorical death, or climax, in Romeo's line, give me my sin again. 2. Lewis Carroll, in Alice in Wonderland, used homophones to create the famous pun, why, sometimes have believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Here, six, and sex, an old term for six, are homophones. Poetry often uses homophones and homonyms to create rich, multi-layered meaning. They allow poets to play with sound and sense, and can add rhythm, resonance, and ambiguity to their work. Let's look at some poetic uses of these devices. 1. Emily Dickinson's poem, A Root of Evanescence, uses the homophones, root, and, route, to add complexity to the fleeting image of a hummingbird. 2. Robert Frost in, The Road Not Taken, uses, road, as a homonym, representing both a physical path and symbolizing the path or choice in life. There you have it, folks. We've explored the fascinating world of homophones and homonyms in literature and poetry. As you can see, these aren't just wordplay for fun, but powerful tools that writers and poets use to add depth, ambiguity, humor, and complexity to their works. I hope this helps you not just in understanding these elements, but also in appreciating the richness they add to our language. Remember, Language is a tool of expression, so don't be afraid to play with it and make it your own.